Boris Johnson and Donald Trump have in common that they both represent the worst caricatures of their national character. The American dream is all about how anyone can become a billionaire, but what they really mean is the child of a millionaire can become a billionaire. It's about valorizing bullies. You think about Wild West films where these people who are committing genocide against Native Americans are treated as heroes. Donald Trump, the brash billionaire bully, absolutely epitomizes that worst element of the American character, which often Americans themselves, because they're caught in their national story, they're caught up in their own nationalism, can't see through as well as people from the rest of the world can see. And similarly, Boris Johnson is part of this absurd British national myth. He's the bumbling public schoolboy bully, the sort of person who we're taught by our establishment to valorise and who everyone else from around the rest of the world can look at and see through. And in that sense, they are the same character, but they're different in the sense that Britain and America have very different national stories, the stories of old, dying empire and the story of the newer ascendant global bully. A little understood part of Britain's imperial legacy is that there are territories across the world which are still effectively, although not formally, part of the British Empire. And many of these territories have absolutely vital geographical locations and that's why Britain has been interested in them for centuries. The Straits of Gibraltar see a huge percentage of the world's shipping go through them. Oman sits at the end of the Strait of Hormuz. The Sultan of Oman was put in power by an MI6 coup in 1970 and is just still there. He's the longest running leader in the Middle East. A large chunk of Omani oil is still owned by Shell. If you are the Pentagon, if you are the American military, then these vestiges of British Empire play a very important strategic role, whether it's in your battles with Iran, as you've seen recently with Gibraltar, essentially on American orders, capturing an Iranian ship, and Oman likely to play an absolutely vital role. There is a future war with Iran. But similarly, America's military base is on the British Indian Ocean's territory. The role of Britain's post-empire in American military planning is absolutely vital. The 45-minute claim that justified the Iraq war was a claim that Saddam Hussein was able to mobilise weapons of mass destruction against Britain's military bases in Cyprus. You know, we can't understand Britain's role in the world right now and America's interests in Britain's role in the world without thinking about ourselves as going through a process of shifting from the world's biggest empire, which we were the year my dad was born, to this collection of islands in the North Atlantic, a fairly normal Northern European country. We need to change the systems which were built by essentially the ruling class over the last few hundred years and turn them into the kinds of democracy that you can have in a modern, digital, connected age when almost all of us can read, when we're educated and we're capable of governing ourselves. If you don't pay for the media you want, then you'll be sold the media that someone else wants you to see. And Double Down News relies not on corporate advertising or dark money from billionaires, it relies on money from its donors. So become a patron and join the future of journalism.